Oh, hey everybody, we're back. Uh, we're gonna be talking about healing, miracles. We're gonna be talking about light, okay? Jesus said that he was light. Jesus called us light, but how does that tie in to the natural? Or does it tie in? I had two times in my life where I experienced two monumental miracles, healings, more than that, but there were two that were monumental. And each time I saw light, okay? Now I wanna read scripture first before I tell my story, but I want you to go to John 9, 5, Jared, John 9, 5. Uh, this is Jesus talking, while I am in the world, I am the light of the world, Jesus said. He was the light of the world. So here's my question. If Jesus was the light of the world, and Jesus is the power, Jesus is God, Jesus is the miracle, is the healing, would it be too much to say that when I experienced both of these healings, one was with my daughter, the other one was with my son, monumental healings that doctors said that there was not much hope, but when I prayed, and I saw this healing each time I saw this light and it was very specific. It, it was the same color, the same kind. So my question is, could this light have been the light of our Lord, the healing? See, I believe it was. I believe when Jesus said that I am the light, meaning him, that he just didn't mean that he lit up the place, that it was bright, though he does. I believe that that light shines through the darkness and defies all of the natural and goes into the supernatural and heals the sick, casts out demons, raises the dead, and defies all of the apostate. I believe that light was Jesus. I'd like to know your experience. Why don't you give me your um, uh, in the chat, or you can shoot me an email at david at davidhebner.com. Tell me your experience. Have you had an experience with light or any kind of experience? You know, Jesus was light, and I saw this light. And the reason I wanted to bring this up is because through the years, I don't know if you've ever been like me, but through the years, certain things have happened to you that's like supernatural. And you've always wanted to talk about it, wanted to ask people about it. And I thought, you know, now's the time I'm going to talk about the light. During these two times of healings, and I've been around other healings, but these were monumental to me because of my two children. And there was a lot at stake. I saw this light and it was very specific, the same kind of light. And so anyway, I'm going to bring on Pastor Mike and he's going to tell me that I'm either crazy or there's something to this light. But I'm, I want to ask him, we haven't talked about this, but... Pastor, are you with me? Hi, David. I sure am. <laughs> hey, brother. So I don't mean to be out there, but could it be? I mean, I said I saw this light and I really did see it. Um, you, I know that you're a believer in miracles. I know that. Absolutely. Um, but do you have anything you can tack on to that or anything you can tell me about the light? Well, in the, in the context in which you're speaking, I, I think there's a there's a higher consciousness that we're connected with when, when we're in certain states of, of mind. And I, I think that, that the Lord reveals himself specifically and in specific ways that, that people need uh, for moments in their lives. And so uh, I would say that that's absolutely true. It happens. It's documented. Um, lots of cases uh, have, have been written about these things. So are you saying that possibly I could have been in tune with, I'm talking about spiritually, we're not talking about the twilight zone here, but right. with, um, for lack of, of, of a definition, I'm going to say God's zone, okay, that I could have stepped into that spiritual realm where I could see spiritually and this light was a glimpse into the spiritual world where we should live as spirits and where God is? Is that possible? Well, I think that's what the Bible describes as visions, David. Um, the prophet Isaiah, for example, you can read about that, and it's an astounding account of what, of what he saw. I think he stepped into a spiritual 
you can call it a spiritual realm if you want to. He had eyes to see that things that he normally did not see. He, he understood them consciously, subconsciously, in his mind at least. And I think that's exactly what you're describing. Wow. Well, you know, what's interesting, it just hit me. I mean, you would think I would know better, but obviously when people see, uh, you know, demonic presence, they feel the demonic presence. Uh, I mean, when we look at the dark side, it, it doesn't really, doesn't seem like such a major deal, but yet I bring up this light. If we're going to see the dark side, how much more are we going to see God's side, especially in healing? We're going to see a light. We may be flooded with just God's glory and his brightness, right? Well, yeah, I and mean, I think that's that's one way that he confirms to us that it is him doing that work in our lives. Now, we'll know if it's if it's the the angel of light, the false light, because the spirit within us will 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 testify to that, David. So, yes, to answer your question, I believe that's true. Wow. And when you said the imitation, the false, uh, the the uh, counterfeit, the angel of light, which we're talking about Satan now, who comes as a as a uh, uh, you know he's a he's a he's a wolf, but he has on sheep's clothing. This kind of goes back. And I want to touch on this real quick. When I talked about Easter and this two thousand years of you know Jesus talked about. Uh, be not watch first, be not deceived second. Number three, there's going to come false prophets and people that say, I am the Messiah. My question is, do you, does that make any sense that in order for people to present these pagan holidays, whether a person thinks it's a pagan holiday or not, if it is a pagan holiday, you almost have to create your own God in order to do that, in order to serve him. Does that make any sense? Well, pagan pagan holidays have have origins, and and it, Paul talked about this. I guess the best analogy I can make, David, is is Paul talked about this in First Corinthians uh, eight through ten when he was answering a question about meat offered to idols, and he forbid Christians if they knew that that meat came from the temple where it was offered to an idol, he forbid them to partake in that because he said. Uh, that offering is not to God, but it's to an idol. And we know that idols aren't real. Behind those idols are demons. And so when you're talking about pagan holidays, you're talking about, in, in, in reality, demons. You're talking about demons that inhabit those things. And so you are worshiping demons when you do those things. Right, but whenever the church is open, I'm talking, you know, churches and a lot of these, well, they say they don't know any better or whatever. But I mean, you know, you, you you they're inviting demons in here when they're when they're doing the pagan holidays. But but could they be creating their own god to offer up to? They're calling it Jesus, but they've created another Jesus. Yeah, one of the things, and particularly you, you, in your first session, you were talking about Easter. Um, that never should have been separated from Passover. It, and, and it wasn't for the first couple of centuries of the early church. The Christians observed uh, Passover and celebrated the resurrection on Passover right. and that whole festival, unleavened bread and, and so forth. And it was, and you were exactly right, it was Constantine that did that, the Council of Nicaea. They changed it because they were becoming more and more anti-Semite in their, in their views. So. That's yeah. When 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 we create these things, then we are we are in danger of losing losing touch with our roots of the faith and what the scripture actually says about it. Amen, amen. I want to touch on one more thing. You know, I talked about testimony, Pastor. I and I have told some people because they come to me brokenhearted and say, David, I stood up and gave everybody my testimony. One girl talked about she used to be a prostitute, and she told everybody in this church she went to, I think it might have been a Sunday school meeting, what her background, and but then the, the great things God has done. And do you know they raked her over the coals? Do you know that came back to haunt her, her testimony? So I tell people, I go, first of all, you don't have to give anyone your testimony. That's not required. But if God leads you, 
to be careful what you say about you. Use discernment. Make it more about God, the great things he's done for you, and don't make it all about you. It could be just a very short sentence. Do you agree with that, or does that make any sense? Yeah, it, it does, David, and I've, I've done that, learned that, and told people that over the years. Your testimony is about what God has done in your life, and you can certainly give some color commentary to help people understand what you've been delivered from, but you right. certainly don't want to go into detail and, and make it sound like you're, you're glorifying any of that. But I would say to, to the one that you described, if, if, if they find themselves in a fellowship of believers, and after giving their testimony with some personal details, the congregation begins to look down or treat you differently, I would suggest that they, that they think about finding a different local body of believers, because, and here's why. Because grace is not in operation there. David, we all have a history, a story, what God has delivered us from. And for any one of us to look down on another person because we think theirs is a little more soiled than ours, that's not grace, brother. Oh, I'm telling you, you hit the nail on the head on that one. Um, I got some good news. Um, we are now, David Hebner TV, which you're on with the Bible and Prayer uh, channel, we are now uh, launching on Apple. Apple has approved us. We've got a brand new app that they're building. Uh, so now we'll reach, uh, you know, thousands, hundreds of thousands of more people. And Pastor, you do an exclusive teaching on the Bible and Prayer channel. Uh, can you tell people just really quick what you teach on? Just to hit a, just a couple of highlights of some of the things that you've taught on the Bible and Prayer channel. Sure, sure. So, uh, and it's a great honor, and I appreciate uh, being able to contribute to to the platform, David. So thank you for that. And that is great news that yeah. Apple is is picking. That is that is fantastic because I know your heart, and that means that uh, what you're providing is going to be available to so many more people to encourage and bless them in their walk. So the Bible and Prayer Channel. What I try to do is take three three to five minutes. And, and just take a, a passage of scripture and, and do, a, do a, a semi deep dive into that and say, listen, folks, here's something to encourage you for your day. Think on these things and then be encouraged in the Lord in your walk. I try to pray for people and we keep it real brief so that folks can use it. In fact, as some kind of like a maybe a devotional for the day, something to chew on as they go through their day. I, that that's that's so awesome, and I really do enjoy those teachings. So, Pastor, um, I want to uh, just mention real quick before we go here that we ha we're going to be together in July there in in Ohio. What's the dates of that gathering that we're going to have that conference? I'll be speaking at. Yeah, that's July twenty fourth, twenty fifth, and Sunday the twenty sixth. So, all right, July uh, Friday and Saturday and Sunday. Okay, good. And real quick, how can they get their tickets or what's that website? That is gothereforeconference.com. Gothereforeconference.com. All right, awesome. I can't wait to see you, uh, you and your lovely wife. Can't wait to see you, brother. All right. Yes. Amen. God it's always a blast, you. David. God Thank bless you, God you bless brother. You. God bless you, Pastor. You. Appreciate Bye -bye. it. Bye -bye. Pastor Mike Spalding is with us every week. Um, okay, so... Uh, I want to, first of all, we're going to go to prayer, go into the Lord on our knees. We're going to give some praise reports. But tonight, I want to do something a little different. I want to pray for all the prayer warriors out there that's been praying for us all of these months for the past year and a half. 600 prayer warriors on your knees praying for us. I want to pray for you tonight. We're going to pray for the victims of this virus. We're going to pray for the children that are, are being taken advantage of because this is such a diversion. We have a lot to pray about tonight. And I want to call my lovely wife over here, Shanita. Let me see if I can adjust the camera here. She's not one to be on camera, but she's, uh, she, she agrees to do it if you want to step up there. There you go. All right, so um, do we have any prayer requests? Yeah, do you want praise reports? Praise yeah, let's do the praise reports. Okay, yeah. Um, well. There are some of our viewers in Central America who are suffering because they've been out of work the last few weeks because of the virus. And another one of our viewers in Tennessee was able to send some money to help them out. And so we're really praising God for the way that the body of Christ is helping each other. 
Yeah. We have a ministry in Central America, and the people in Central America, I mean, you think that the Western world right now is having a hard time? Uh, there's people living on dirt floors, you know, running after chickens, and you can imagine they live day by day. We're talking hour by hour of making money for provision. So we want to help them, and that's part part of going to be our prayer tonight. So what what other uh, praise reports? Do you um, let's see. Oh, we want to welcome our new members. People sending their testimonies this week. Adam from Poland, um, Jeremy and Tammy from Kentucky, Shelley in Texas. Denise says, I was unhappy with the modern church until I found this church family. I'm blessed and content now. Charlene says, I'm all about what's going on Monday nights. And uh, a few weeks ago, Sunshine was able to testify at a town meeting. And so she just wanted to thank you for how you shared about obeying God when it conflicts with obeying government. Awesome. And um, let's see. Um, my friend Lorianne, she had a brain tumor removed. She'll know in June if it's in remission. She's a single mom. We're praying. Or, um, okay, one more praise report. Um, Chanel, a mom of six who lost her husband to after a kidney and heart transplant, she says, I use my job as a way to show people Jesus. I know a lot of people say we shouldn't go out, but I walk by faith, not fear. I'm not saying the virus doesn't exist. By his stripes, I'm healed. Whether I have a virus or not, we have a job to do. We should come out the more confident and bold and on bended knee, be reading, studying, praying, singing, dancing, repenting, and communing. Amen. That's, that's awesome. Now, I've got a couple of prayer requests here, and I know you have a few too, but we've got uh, one says, my dearest pastor and lovely wife, Shanita, tornadoes are coming through our town. Uh, I'm going to just kind of paraphrase a lot of this. She's asking for prayer for her family, for her kids. She said God has answered prayers in her life, okay? But she's asking for more prayers for her family, uh, and we're going to be praying uh, for Rhonda, okay? Uh, Rhonda's asking that... Um, uh, that if we'll do a daily prayer for people, and we're going to start sending out daily texts, text to people, prayer requests. Thank you, Rhonda, for that. If you guys have any ideas of how we can encourage people and help people, we don't have hardly anybody. It's just me and Shanita helping, but we don't definitely don't have much money. But we are asking God uh, the best way to serve people and to serve you guys. Okay. Susan says, we're going into lockdown here in New Zealand. Susan's in New Zealand. She says, I'm on a farm with my family, parents and two sisters, and my brother and his family live next door. Okay. She said, if, I guess if we're being locked down, this is the best place to do it. Uh, so even if she can't go to church and fellowship, uh, she'll miss. She'll stay focused on God, and she'll pray to be a light to her family. And folks, this is so important now as we're in lockdown. I don't want to use the word lockdown. I want to use the word. I want to use the word that we are now a family integrated together. You know, you, you, lockdown is like something where you, you're forced to do something. We're not forced to do anything. We're under God's regime. We're under God's ruling. Okay, so this is a time that we use for God. We say, God, okay, man says we can't do this, but you say we can do what you tell us to do. I've had people get out and walk around their neighborhoods and pray over their neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. Okay, I've walked around my area and prayed over my area, and I haven't done that in such a long time. Prayed for individual people, which I haven't done in a long time. I'm talking in-depth praying. Uh, praying for things I've never prayed for because I'm in one spot. You know, sometimes the devil wants to hurt us, but God comes in and uses it for the good. Okay, mm -hmm. so let's find a different word for lockdown, all right? Let's uh, let's let's talk about it being a family and together for God. Um, okay, so you have any other prayer requests? Yeah, we have an update from Rhonda on that tornado. It did hit in her town, but her home was spared. All right, praise yeah. praise God. Okay, uh, prayer request. Yes, um, Priscilla, Jordan, Henry, Brittany, uh, Justin, Ethan's wife, Troy, Lynn's surgery May seventh. Barbara's 94-year-old mother, and I, I know I have some more, but um, we'll get them an email. Go ahead and email to david at davidheavener.tv. All right. Thank yeah. you. Appreciate it. All right. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Um, and <clears throat> before we go to God in prayer on our knees, let us just remember that no matter what we're going through, all right, what we are going through, 
that there's always someone that's going through something worse, okay? Let's, you've heard the term count our blessings. Let's look at what, what God has given us. Let's be thankful for what we have, okay? Okay, let's go to the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for loving us. Thank you for being a wonderful God. I pray for each and every person that you need to mention. I pray for all the victims of this virus, their families. I'm praying for the people that have been shut in and they can't work and they're praying for provision. I'm praying for the children that are being taken advantage of. I'm praying for the unborn that the demons are out there trying to grab our children. I'm praying for a hedge of protection around our children. And there's a gal out there that's really having problems in her chest. I don't know if it has anything to do with your heart or your digestive system, but you've been having issues. I'm asking for an immediate healing right now. There's a guy with his eyes, problem with eyes. I'm asking for a healing over those eyes. I'm asking for that healing of, there's a, there's a pain. If someone has a pain in their leg and, I'm, and it has to do with your veins. I'm asking for healing of those veins. They go back to perfection. I thank you, Lord, for each and every person. I pray for the prayer warriors that have been praying for us. I lift up Jared, Mike Spaulding, my wife, Sunshine, Shelly, all of the people, Martha, that have been involved in the ministry. I could go on and on. Forgive me if I left your name out, but I know who you are. I pray for you. I pray for each and every person that leaves messages below every video. I pray for every person that's on chat. I pray for that family that needs restoration, Lord, that right now you're miraculously restoring that family. Thank you for all you've given us. And in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you so much. If you would, please consider going and helping with the ministry financially. If you'll dial a text at 91999, the word chosen. That's 91999, the word chosen. And just consider, you know, making a donation. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your encouragement. Um, and also, please go to davidhebener.tv and sign up. It's just $4.99 a month. Um, we're going to get kicked off of YouTube one day. YouTube has no allegiance to Christians. They don't care. And I'm not going to say they don't care about God. I don't know a lot of them personally. But I can tell you by the way they act and the content, the world just doesn't understand the things of God. That's why God led me to open davidhebener.tv if you'll just go and sign up, consider it's just $4.99 a month. Thank you so much. God bless you. Um, so if there's nothing else, I want to leave you with this, that um, until you, you've never really lived, okay? Lived, I'm talking about you haven't lived and been excited and wake up in the morning and just excited about the day. You've never really lived until you found something that's worth dying for and that's God I love you see you next week God bless you